Hey friends, welcome back to Beer and Beauty, it's Kasha. So today is kind of a sad day because it's, it is the first of many weekends where I will not be able to work. Which is so sad because of many reasons. I mean, of course, it's gonna be hard financially, but I also love what I do. You know, I love being a makeup artist, I love being a face painter, and it's just crazy how just as I was beginning to really settle down in my life in, in Los Angeles, this all happened. I, like, just when I started to build up a schedule that was keeping me really busy and really motivated, everything in the world changed all at once. I just found out that a big festival that I work every year that's I'm a big institution at is canceled and my cruise ship gig is canceled and my next event that hasn't for sure canceled isn't until May. I'm not here to be a bummer. I'm actually, I came up with the idea that in order to keep doing what I love to do, I'm gonna come on here on YouTube and I'm gonna share with you guys what, I'm, what I love doing. So I thought it'd be fun that since I'm, I won't be able to do face painting gigs for a while, I thought to, in today's video that I would instead come on camera and show you on myself three of my favorite face painting designs. And I feel like it might be fun for to do this every weekend until this whole situation is behind us. That way I'm still practicing and I'm still doing what I love and I'm, share, I'm, still, I'm still sharing it with the world, perhaps even a bigger audience than I would just doing it live at an event, so. And I think it'd be fun to incorporate some of that, some of that portion of my life here on YouTube. You know, I haven't really done that very much in the past. I think I did like a face painting haul video once and like I've, I've, I've shared my face painting kit with you guys, but I've never done face painting on camera, so. There's a first time for everything, and today I'm going to be showing you guys three of my very favorite face painting designs. Uh, I always get excited when people ask for them. I get excited to do them because they're bright and they're colorful, and I get to practice like my favorite line work and, and what have you. So without further ado, here are my three favorite face painting designs that I love to do. Uh, while on the job, while I face paint at birthday parties, festivals, weddings, whatever the situation is, I love to be face painting at it. So let's get into it. Okay friends, so the first design that I'm going to be painting for you today is going to be something that I always get excited when somebody asks me to paint this. It's a tiger. And you can modify the colors, you can do them orange, you can do whatever color. But the first thing I'm doing now is I'm using Krylon White. And I'm just laying down these big shapes of color of just the white. I'm doing two big triangles over the eyes and just like a mustache area under the nose there. So now I'm taking one of my favorite tiger cakes, and this is by Krivelin, and I'm just loading it up on my sponge on the corner of the sponge, not across the bottom, just but just at an angle, just on the corner, and I'm patting it into place and working it and pivoting it, so I'm just using the corner of the sponge across my entire face wherever I didn't lay down the white already. So I'm just doing that all the way across my face with the yellow towards the center and the darkest orange towards the outside. And now I'm just laying down a little bit of glitter. I've got this uh, Mama Clown yellow glitter that is so pretty with the orange tiger. So now I'm going to be starting on some of my line work. So the first thing I do is I start the eye area by making these big, large teardrops. And the way I do that is I press down the hardest at the top and I gradually pull away as I go down. And, and now I'm outlining the eye area by doing these like scalloped scoop shapes and I'm trying to get really nice fine points towards the ends by pulling away as I end. Now I'm doing the nose area which I do by um, just kind of like following the contours of the nose. Now I'm doing the muzzle area which came out admittedly a little bit sloppy but 
I just drew a line down the middle and did these scoop shapes around the outside using that same technique pressing harder where you want it to be thicker and let it like pressing less with less intensity and uh, thinner areas and then I tried to do like scalloped whiskers as well. It does help to uh, make the tiger look a little bit more realistic to do the lips. Uh, normally I would use a q-tip if I was on the job, but I'm just doing this on myself on freshly clean brushes, so... Now I'm working on the tiger stripes, so I'm doing that a similar technique as I described earlier. I'm starting just pressing with the tip of my brush and then in the middle of the stripe to get it to be thicker, I'm pressing down harder and then letting go towards the end to give it that sharp tip as well. And then under the eyes I kind of do a similar thing as well, but I'm trying to do these like triangular that where the tiger stripes kind of point towards the center of the face. Just pressing with the tip of my brush where I want the lines to be really thin and pressing down harder where I want the lines to be thick. Now I'm doing the fuzzies on the outside of the face. I kind of messed up there so what I ended up doing I, I just wiped it away with a wipe and I went back in and tried to make them nice and thin. So first I'm doing my tiger stripes again, thinnest at the ends, thicker towards the centers of the stripes. And when I do the fuzzies, I kind of flip out towards the top and flip under towards the ends and gradually make the fur a little bit tinier as I go down the face uh, closer to the mouth. Now I'm choosing a couple areas to add a couple dots just to add interests. I always like to put some, a couple dots like near the corners of the eyes. So your tiger could be done right here and oftentimes that is where I would end it. But sometimes I like to throw in some teeth. Usually I don't fill them in just because I can't be bothered but there's my tiger face. So next step I'm going to be doing a super fast butterfly and I'm using a bright neon rainbow cake. This one's from Krivlin. I love this one. And I'm just loading up on the edge of my sponge and I'm doing that same kind of like pivoting technique where I uh, tap the sponge in, uh, colors into place like so. So I'm just trying to do the same thing on the other side, try to match the same butterfly shape on the other side, just uh, hugging the inside corner of the sponge to the inside part of my face and pivoting the outside edge of the sponge to uh, create that really nice rainbow blend. Now I'm looking to add some glitter. My favorite glitter for any kind of rainbow cake is the Fruit Punch by Bama Clown, but that was I was all out of that one, so I used the yellow instead. And now I'm just cleaning up some of the edges of my design. Um, every any place where the shape wasn't exactly right, I just cleaned it up with a baby wipe. So now I'm getting ready to do some of my line work. I'm dipping into my Mayron Edge palette. I've been in love with this thing lately. So same thing as the beginning of the tiger. I kind of make a big teardrop angling towards the center of my face and then I like to do a big swirl for the bottom wing of the butterfly and these kind of teardrops that point towards the inner corner of my eye just kind of hug the, the shape. Do a couple more teardrops on the top wing and another like uh, triangular kind of shape and then I try to do the same thing on the other side. I am a little bit rusty here as you can see, but that's why we're doing this. It's good to continue to do the face painting, the things that you love, just so you don't get rusty while you are not working. So now for the butterfly body, I just do a tiny little teardrop going down and then two swirls for the antennas. I should have used a smaller brush to do the antennas so I could maybe have them overlapping and they're really cute when they overlap, but I didn't do that for this, that's okay. At that point, you could just leave it there. Sometimes I will if I'm really in a pinch to finish up, but to add, give it a little bit more interest and do a couple little dots and starburst using the white from the Mayron Edge palette and that just 
makes it a little bit more cute. Uh, that does kind of add like an extra minute to the design, but if you leave the starbursts out, you can do like 20 of these in an hour, or I can. And just for fun, I decided to throw in a little NYX liquid lipstick to go with this design, just to make it a little bit more cute. You could also put a little bit of pink glitter on top of the lipstick. Uh, that is also a big fan favorite. It looks beautiful. So the third design that I always get super excited when people ask for and that I love doing is a sugar skull. Now every time I do a sugar skull I do it a little bit different, like I always kind of put a unique twist on each and every sugar skull that I do. One thing that always stays the same is that I always start off by blocking out the face white and my favorite white for sugar skulls is the Krylon white, the aqua color. And for this sugar skull, I'm just going to be doing half the face. And I wanted to make this particular sugar skull very colorful. I've never actually used a rainbow cake with a sugar skull before, but as you'll see as this progresses, it actually comes out pretty cute. So I'm just putting a little bit rainbow over the eye, pivot it in certain choice areas of my face, on my chin, on the top of my forehead, and in the hollow of the cheek there. I'm dusting all the rainbow areas with a little bit of glitter. Now I'm going to be starting on my line work. I'm going to be using this beautiful burgundy fab color, starting with the nose, just creating a little bit of a shape to go on the nose. When it comes to the design of this sugar skull, I kind of made it up as I went along. I kind of outlined where I wanted the top of my eye socket to be, uh, just making this big half curve, and then on the bottom, a series of different sized teardrops and whimsical thin lines, just to kind of give it lots of interest and make it really elegant and sinuous. I did a kind of similar thing in all the areas of the face where I added rainbow. I tried to make really decorative, but also thin and whimsical and sinuous kind of designs in all the little rainbow areas. Just a series of different swirls and lines and teardrops that kind of fit together nicely in like a little pattern. They just kind of like fit together in a beautiful kind of puzzle piece kind of way. And wherever I couldn't fit in a line, or wherever I just kind of thought it might look good, I added a couple dots here and there. I also decided to do my lipstick in this beautiful burgundy color. Again, if I were on the job, I would use a Q-tip for the lipstick, but because it's just me working on myself, I just used the brush. Uh, this, and I'm using the same brush for all of the line work here. I do the same kind of swirls that hug together and fit nicely together on the chin as well as in the hollows of the cheeks just to kind of make the design kind of come together. And for the teeth, I'm just doing this tiny little gesture of teeth right here. Adding a couple more teardrops to the center. So at this point, the design could be done, but I'm just kind of trying to perfect it. I'm going back in in different areas where I feel like the design just needs a little bit something or there's certain teardrops I want to just touch up or throw in a couple dots and stuff. So I decided I didn't like how the nose came out, so I did, but that's okay because it's very easy to fix. Just wipe it off and go back in with the white and go on top with your burgundy color again and just kind of reformulate the shape. I wanted to add a little bit more interest. I wanted some like swirls and stuff to go around the nose, little dots. I still don't love how it came out, but it's a little bit better. Getting those lines really thin and sinuous is all about practice. 
uh, and like really perfecting how to use just the tip of it, the paintbrush to get the look you're going for. So that is it friends, those were my top three favorite things to paint live at an event. I painted this sugar skull, a tiger, and a butterfly. But I wanted to play with some color because feeling a little down in the dumps and bright beautiful colors like this can here, perk up my mood a little bit. So I, I hope to do more of these videos in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know down in the comments if for next time if there's like a certain thing you'd like me to see me paint. I'd love, I'd love to see some of those suggestions actually. And if there's any other videos or topics you'd like me to cover in the coming weeks, I'll probably have time to do them. I'm gonna try to post a video every day this week. Yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy hanging out with me. I really enjoyed hanging out with you and until next time, cheers. Bye!